I'd like to welcome everybody to the April meeting of the Mercer Parks and Recreation Commission. This time we'll call the meeting to order. And as usual, our first item on the agenda is the prayer and pledge of allegiance. And Elsie Easter has agreed to lead us in those. Elsie? Okay. Will we all stand, please? Our Father, today we come to thee first with thanksgiving in our hearts for each of us arriving safe. Father, we ask that you be with each of us as we make decisions that affect our community. Be with those that are overseas. If it be your will, please bring them back home to their loved ones. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Elsie. Everybody should have received their packet earlier in the week. Contained in that packet were the minutes from our March 2nd meeting. At this time, I'll uh, entertain any changes or corrections that need to be made to the minutes. And if there are none, a motion for approval. I move to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. First item under the agenda is uh, consideration for approval on a new premium family 90-day pass. Nate Williams has joined us today to talk about that. Nate, sorry. Good, good afternoon. Thank you for uh, letting me be here. On November 3rd, 2010, uh, this commission approved for the outdoor pool to become a premium attraction. Um, that put the outdoor pool in line with instructor-led classes, specialty programming, uh, and then the racquetball courts at Patterson Park. Um, that was agreed. It was approved. Um, what we need to do now is we need to look at um, one of our favorite pass options that we have for the outdoor pool is the 90-day family pass. This pass lets a family um, use the pass for 90 days. It's meant for June, July, and August for the outdoor pool. Uh, our current pass structure, we have just a general family 90-day pass for that cost $150. Uh, but since we've made this change in the type of feature of the outdoor pool, we need to actually um, make a premium pass uh, so people could still utilize this 90-day family pass, which is very popular. Um, so what I'm uh, requesting today is that we add an additional pass to our um, offering, uh, be a family premium 90-day pass. Um, what we're proposing is that this pass costs $200. That's a 33% increase from $150. Uh, and the way we came up on, the, on that is that aligns uh, that percentage increase with our other two uh, most popular passes in the summertime, which is the 30-visit pass and also the daily pass. So um, what we're requesting, again, is uh, the approval uh, of the new pass. This is not a change in price, but a new pass be added to our offering of $200 uh, for a family premium pass. Um, I'll make it clear that this pass can be used year-round. It's not just for the summertime, and people do purchase the family 90-day pass through, throughout the year, but it's mainly geared towards those families who want to use, utilize the outdoor pool uh, throughout the course of June, July, and August. John? Any uh, questions for Nate? I'd, I'd be happy to. I, you know, all, I haven't laid out all the percentage increases for all of our passes. 33% increase tends to be the lower side of any increase from general to premium. And it aligns, again, like I said, with, with the summer, our, our favorite or most popular type of pass offerings. Any questions? I was just going to ask for clarification for our viewers what is considered family how many Bart will be able to answer that better um, as far as how many and what's considered in a family yeah our family is defined as a married uh, husband and wife or parent with depend dependent children 17 years or younger or 22 years or younger and being a full-time student thank you it's a good question any other questions there aren't any. We need a motion for acceptance of this uh, program. So moved. Second. 
We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Nate, thank you for being here. Appreciate it. Item two under the agenda is a consideration for approval um, on an acceptance of donation of recycling service. And Nikki Hensley is here to tell us all about it. Nikki, welcome. Thank you. Hello. I'm here to talk about the PBT, or better known as People for Better Tomorrow. They're a local business from Murfreesboro, and they've been here for about 11 years. Terry and Ron Cook are the owners, and they've volunteered their services to help our department pick up all of our recycling. It's a curbside recycling, and also, in addition, they have... They're going to offer their customers the option for a small portion of their fees they pay to go to the Parks and Rec Department. Um, a group of our staff has been put together to improve our recycling efforts, and we've met to discuss logistics and the priorities, and it's looking very good. And we're making steps to do all the changing that we need to do. Um, in our benefit, to benefit us, PBT is a single stream recycling organization so that means that we can put our plastic our aluminum our paper all in the same thing the only thing they do ask is that we don't put the glass in there just for, hand for handling reasons um, so we request your approval in accepting the donation of both services and future monetary donations all right anybody have any questions for Nikki regarding the service what is the percentage that they're going to donate Angela can answer. Yes. Uh, what, what they are looking to do, PBT, I, I believe that the way that their that their business profits is through, um, of course, through their customers, through their curbside programs, pay a fee. They offer several organizations. Uh, when people sign up, they can offer for these um, for people to choose whether their money goes to um, some different local nonprofit organizations and, and and other charities. They would like to include us on this list. I am not sure. We we don't expect it to be a lot of money. Uh, I believe it's like a 5% return, something like that, but, but, it, but an option for people to choose us in their list of people um, to kind of give back to, to the community. So you think it's a 5% on what they're going to uh, net from working with the Parks and Recreation? Uh, and, and, and customers would also have the option, um, you know, just, just give it out to their customer base of, of making a is donation. It, through. Is it based on how many people choose it? Murfreesboro Parks and Recreation Department as their choice of, I don't, I don't want to call it charity, but I mean, whatever, yes. for whatever reason, if they choose us over other organizations, then we'll get a, that percentage of whatever that amount is. That's correct, yes. And, and that would probably be from their yearly fee, which is like $150 a year or something I, I, like that. I believe that's correct. Yeah. Okay. But let me also mention what our what Nikki and um, and our committee has done is really stepped forward within our department. We have had recycling in our department um, in various capacities, um, you know, for, for years and years. It's always been a struggle for us, um, the logistics. So this is a, a huge opportunity for us to, to to take advantage. What what Nikki and and other staff have done is really try to prioritize where our recycling locations can be in a way that is going to um, uh, for, first of all, be the most practical. We we expect to to implement changes in steps. We don't expect to immediately go out. Um, for example, um, in an in an unstaffed park, an unsupervised container would be very likely to be contaminated with non-recyclable items. So what we're looking to do is first target um, some areas that are staffed for special events, getting um, volunteers to come and help us monitor that, help people to only put recyclable items in the recyclable container. Containers. We um, have been implementing. Nikki has done a wonderful job to work with the staff at Patterson to get some things going there. Um, the Wilderness Station, um, Nikki um, Jordan has been has been helping to coordinate um, with um, with Nikki Hensley. Just for a little bit of, um, we've got Team Nikki running our recycling committee, so it, it makes it both easier and harder there. Um, they've been working together to to identify places where when PBT does come by, it's um, you know convenient and um, an uncontaminated recyclable items okay. it sounds like a great opportunity great. for us and for his company that's why I was con concerned I'm just curious about you know what percentage is coming our way mm -hmm. thank you thank you are there any other questions for Angela or Nikki there are none we need a motion for approval of this uh, service I shall move that we accept this. I'll second but also adding that we 
County and thank you for providing the service to us at no cost. Absolutely. Any other discussion? All right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Nikki, thanks for your work on this. Thank you. Team Nikki. Team Nikki. <laughs> All right, our third item is a consideration for clarification and re-implementation of the McFadden rental rates. And Gary Arbit has joined us today to tell us all about it. Gary, welcome. Well, thank you for having me. Uh, just to give everybody a little update, I have actually, Carolyn Carr retired, as everybody's probably aware of, and I took on the additional responsibility of the McFadden Community Center, along with the other responsibilities, athletics, and as you know, lots of things. Uh, I did notice that uh, at the McFadden Community Center, the rental rates were not consistent with some of the other facilities. Uh, the rates were the same, but they were broke down a little different. So what I want to do is clear up a little of the terminology, uh, and that's where I come before you today. Uh, currently, the McFadden rental rates were $25 per hour for the gymnasium and $15 an hour for staffing uh, for a total of $40. Uh, Patterson and Sportscom uh, had the same rate of $40 per hour, but it wasn't broke down that way. And what I'd like to do is uh, uh, clear up that uh, terminology for people that call so they'll, uh, you know, understand that the rate is $40 per hour regardless of what gymnasium they rent or what facility they go to. Uh, also, I would like to re-implement uh, rental rates. We're getting a lot of requests for the... Uh, the McFadden Community Center game room, the multi-purpose room that we have there. And uh, I did look that up, and they were uh, renting at $15 per hour, and I wanted to kind of re-implement that. Um, the, these rates are consistent with the past fee structure, and uh, there's no fee, there's no rate change. I'm just bringing them back to the forefront where people are interested in those uh, areas of the community center. I'd be glad to answer any questions if you have any. <clears throat> any questions for Gary? I have one. When you say re-implement, there, so people have been using it free of charge here the past several years? or They just haven't been using it at all. No one has asked Using's to use it. Okay. So when people have started calling, uh, I've really tried to make an effort of, of getting that community center more visible than it has been. Uh, nothing against the old regime, but it's just something that I really want to do is, is increase our rental, uh, our visibility, our rental, our attendance, all that kind of stuff. And so when I started looking into it, I was like, well, why doesn't anybody rent these? And they were like, well, nobody ever asked. I said, well... You know, let's get it back out there that it is available in case someone does want to rent it. Okay, good idea. I got a question for Gary. Yeah. Um, when we rent a gym, does it always include staff? I mean, it does. Staff, okay. Yes, sir. Very good. Good questions. Any other? There are no questions. We need a approval for the rates presented. I move to approve. Second. Motion is second. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Gary? I did have one other thing I wanted to address. Um, like I say, I've been trying to get the uh, community center uh, more participants coming in, that type thing. So what I did for the months of February and March is I actually kind of tracked the uh, participation hours. Uh, the problem that I ran into is, is a lot of times kids or adults or someone will come in and, and uh, because it is a free community center, we don't check them in. So basically if someone comes in and stays three hours, they may have been counted three times. So there is a little bit, uh, it's not a per, per participant, but it's just the actual participant hours. And uh, for the month of February, we had 2,158 participants. And for the month of March, we had 2,962 participants. So it looks like it's really kind of getting back on track. Uh, some of the groups that we have in there is like the youth basketball, adult basketball, after school programs, rentals, open gyms, city center is that type thing. So we're really trying to make an effort over there to uh, get that facility back visible to uh, the public. I, I think we have, we have an opportunity, and you may be doing it, but to you know co-op maybe with the McFadden School next door or even the uh, 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 the, the housing projects over uh, over that we, we have some facilities I think already there if we can create some programs maybe to incorporate some of that it, it's a it's, it's a place that's needed in that community very much I mean, it's uh, I grew up in that community I grew up in that community center and I, I think it's probably been underutilized a lot but I think I'm glad that you, you're looking at maybe increasing that so I would hope we would we would do better over there it definitely is and I know that uh, just obviously the summer uh, programs coming up will be big and uh, there's also a, a youth volleyball program that we're trying to get established over there so hopefully that'll bring more people in good 
Good work, Gary. Okay, good job. Thanks. Thank you. All right, we'll go to our last item on the agenda today. Uh, Bart Fight has joined us to give us a report on the goings on at SportsCon. Bart, welcome. Good evening. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, uh, my name is Bart Fight. I'm the superintendent at SportsCon. And uh, I know Tom Sage came before you a couple of months ago and gave a report on Patterson Park as far as revenues, activities, partnerships, and co-op, and so forth. So I was thrilled when Mr. Goodman advised me that I need to give a report. So <laughs> here I am to give a report on SportsCom, a summary of what's going on out there, give you a little insight of what we do. And uh, I do have a PowerPoint presentation that we have put together. So. Uh, I'll just start from there. Uh, today I'd like to give a report on our great facility, which is located at 2310 Memorial Boulevard, which is known as SportsCom. I have had some people say, well, how did to come up with the name of SportsCom? So I did a little research. Mr. Paul Vaughn was chairman of the building committee. I had talked to uh, Mr. Rainier, ran into him, and talked to him probably 30 minutes on it. But uh, he had said that they take some uh, input from the community, and it, when it was built in 1987, it was uh, it's going to be a sports complex. As we, as you know, we have the two Olympic size pools, we have the gym with uh, six goals, the gym, the track, and weight room. So it was going to be the sports complex in Murfreesboro. To shorten it, they put the C O M, and that's how it came to be known as sports, and then a little asterisk and then com, uh, complex in Murfreesboro. So that's how that came about. Uh, SportsCom is a 30,000 square foot recreational facility which was opened in 1987 for a cost of $2.7 million. It is located on an 81 acre site known as McKnight Park, which also includes our five field softball and baseball complex which is known as Starplex, a four field youth softball complex known as McKnight Fields, which also has two practice fields for overflow or tournament games if needed. We have four outdoor sand volleyball courts, an outdoor pavilion that seats 80 people. We have 80. We have eight full-time employees with around 60 part-time during the fall, winter, and spring. But when summer hits, our employees will go over to over 100 due to our seasonal employees. Our revenues come from admissions to the facility, along with the indoor and outdoor pool rentals, our meeting room rentals, our gym rentals, and we even had a few weddings even in our facilities. I would just like now to give you a brief outline of what we offer at SportsCom for the citizens of our community. I will break it down into four categories, aquatics, wellness, fitness, athletics, and partnerships. We offer a wide variety of classes in our indoor and outdoor pools. Some of our exercise classes will include the shallow water exercise, deep water exercise, gentle joints, and we need to have a toning class. We also have a consistent group of swimmers that come in early in the morning at 6 a.m. and also provide 40 hours a week for our open swim. These, these citizens that come in at 6 a.m. usually take advantage of our lap swim, which is 6 a.m. to 8 a.m., and we do have a large number of them. We do offer lifeguard training, water safety, instructor classes, and of course we have party rentals in our indoor and outdoor pool, which is, was newly renovated last year. That has been a huge success, as you well know, that opened last July. I will show you some revenues that include last summer later on in the presentation to prove that this was a great decision to renovate our outdoor pool and turn it into an immensely popular recreation destination for the citizens of Murfreesboro and Rutherford County. Now we will move on to our wellness division, which is headed by Allison Davison, our wellness fitness coordinator. We have a lot of group exercises held in our facilities, which include beginning weightlifting, Tai Chi, we have core energy, weight training, step aerobics, and yoga. One of our most popular classes now is the Zumba class, which has almost outgrown our aerobics room at SportsCom. Uh, we also have personal trainers for people if they so desire at an additional cost. Jennifer Joins, one of our assistant uh, fitness coordinators, has started a running program that starts at 6.15 in the morning. And she had 65 runners participate last year throughout the year. And we also had 30 that even participated and finished the Murfreesboro Half Marathon last year. She has lined up also informational speakers that go over such topics as nutrition, how to choose the correct running shoes, and even help to prepare you mentally for long races. 
Some of our preschool programs that we do have at Sports Common includes the most, one of our most popular classes, Toddler Time with Thomas. We do have a tumbleweeds class, and we even offer Top Watch program to keep the youngsters busy while mom or dad are working out. We also have a special group of customers that is known as the early birds that come in at 6 a.m. that work out every day before they, their day begins. The next area and one of our most popular areas that we have is our athletic programs. Of course, we offer the open gym play for all ages, along with such organized programs as our volleyball programs, co-ed and power. We have a youth volleyball program that just began last year. It's been very popular at 4.30 in the afternoon before our league play begins on Thursday nights. We have the four sand volleyball courts, and of course we offer youth basketball, which has close to 100 teams, and also an adult basketball program that plays there on Wednesday nights. We also offer sports camps throughout the summer. Uh, they're headed by Thomas Laird and his athletic staff. We would now like to move on to our partnerships and groups that we work with throughout our community. One such group is our police department, which we offer two rad camps during the summer. We also partnered with the Kids Triathlon Group that had over 250 youngsters last year that participated. We also work closely with the Qantas Girls Softball Program and the Optimus Little League Baseball Program as we let them use our facilities for sign-up registration and uh, even have some tryouts there. We also work with and we also host our local swim team in Murfreesboro, which is known as the SportsCom Comets. We work with the TSSAA in the girls and boys state tournaments and also provide needed assistance during the annual spring fling as our facility serves as the headquarters for this annual event that brings in thousands of visitors to our city. One area we're really trying to get into is the area to work for the special needs kids. We work with the Sports for All program, the Learn Group, which helped build the bocce courts at Sportscom, and we also hosted a basketball camp for the Learn program as the MTSU basketball team and Coach Kermit Davis came out for a day-long camp. We have worked with Learn also on a flag football program and hope to continue that, and I hope we get more involved in, in the future with this group of special youngsters. We also have a number of special events held each year at Sportscom, such as our National Night Out, a couple of overnight lock-ins that we have each year, the annual Polar Bear Plunge, uh, which uh, Mr. Bratcher has emceed. We had over 500 participants last year in January. We also have a breakfast with Bob that if you complete a 14-day workout course within 20 days, you get to have breakfast with one of our most popular weight room attendants, Bob Pierce. And our facility even brings in visitors from seven states when we host the uh, TVA Super Challenge that brings in thousands of visitors for a one-day event. We also have our Customer Appreciation Day in December each year as we show our appreciation to our loyal customers as they enjoy holiday music, treats, and even a gift bag to take home. We also host the July 4th event now that it has been moved from MTSU to McKnight Park where we had thousands of visitors there last year and expecting a big crowd this year. We also host a Labor Day pool party in the conclusion of our sports uh, pool season. And in conclusion, I'd just like to say that, that Sportscom is a very popular destination as we average over 15,000 visitors a month. I want you just, just now to take a look at these revenues from July 2009 to March 2010, which was around $275,000 compared to our July 10 to the end of last month, March 2011, which has hit almost $430,000. That has been a 56% increase. And this goes to show that, that the majority of this came from our outdoor pool, uh, renovated outdoor pool, where we you know, didn't get out until July this year. We're going to have it June, July, and August. So we're expecting a big year for that. In conclusion, I would be remiss if I didn't uh, give recognition to Nate Williams as a college graduate of the 1970s. So I was not associated with very many PowerPoints. So <laughs> I just want to acknowledge Nate that helped me tremendously this week and the past, well, really the past three weeks getting this thing together for you. Uh, we have a fine staff at Sportscom. I wouldn't trade them, you know, with anybody. We've, in fact, this week we've been closed. We've been doing training all week as far as safety films. Uh, we're getting new carpet on the pool deck. Uh, we, we just had our gym refinished yesterday. So we're, we're looking forward to opening it up this Saturday morning at 8 o'clock for our citizens. And we look forward to another record 
record-breaking spring and summer. It hopes there are loyal patrons or those new customers come out to Sportscom. I hope this gives you an insight in our operation, our fine facility located on Memorial Boulevard, known as Sportscom. All right. Any questions for Bart? Uh, one question. As we go forward this summer, we talked about it last year, about the parking for the pool. I'm sure we'll probably continue to monitor that and see how that works out for us. Expanding, we looked, talked about providing a lot to the side to do that on. So I'm sure we'll keep that in mind as we go forward. Yeah, we've discussed that, Mr. Good and myself, uh, probably put some overflow parking, of course, for our pool. It's been, as you know, been very popular. So looking forward to an exciting year, rest of the year. You do a great job. We Thank appreciate you. your hard work. Bart and Lanny, and I know that there's a lot of people behind the scenes, Gary and Thomas and all the people who work out at the sport, the Starplex Fields and McKnight Park, but... You know, Optimist opened last weekend with their opening day, and I'm out at the ball fields four or five days a week, and it, it's always good to go by and you see all the soccer teams that are practicing out there, football teams that may have a pickup football game, but you know those parks are utilized by by thousands on a weekly basis, and and uh, I don't think you guys get good enough credit, but uh, in saying good job on keeping those those up up cap, and also with the partners that we have with. Optimus and Kiwanis and NBA who who really put their time, resources, and financial resources in making sure that they keep our parks and our fields up to, to their standards as well. So sure. it's okay. nice to hear the PA system working over at the <laughs> at the Sportscom this year and, and uh, the smile on kids' face when they get their names announced when they come up to bat. So that's been an added change this year. Thank you, Mr. Yeah, thank you. We I know we uh, I've said before we depend on volunteers. For, for a lot of things and with the uh, as far as the coaches for all our youth leagues as far as spring flame coming up where we, we need hundreds of volunteers in the Chamber of Commerce that's a great job getting those and we couldn't do them the half marathon we couldn't do them without the volunteers and they're, they're you know giving their time to the community to do that so we really appreciate them appreciate them for what they do and uh, like I said look forward to another exciting season Thank you. Well, you guys do a great job, and uh, I know some folks that are in your early morning group, and every time I see them, they sing y'all's praises. So you've got a fantastic staff, and y'all do a wonderful job. Thank you. That's the last item on our agenda. Is there any other business to come before the commission? I'd like to, if I could. Uh, Ms. Baker Go couldn't be with us today. She um, it was busy bringing a new Parks and Recreation participant into the world. Sarah Grace joined us last night. Um, so Kelly will obviously be out for a little while. And I wanted to introduce you to Adam Tucker, who is a staff attorney with the city, who will be um, helping out in uh, Kelly's absence. Adam, welcome. welcome. Thank you. Glad to have you here. Glad to be here. Adam, if you don't mind, we need to, uh, a, a two-mile training run, and we need to know your time. It has to be Kelly's time, so we'll, if we could get that by next <laughs> mission, the next one, that would be great. Well, I can do it right now. Okay. All right. All right. Well, that's great news for Kelly, and congratulations to her. <laughs> Any other questions, comments, or anything for the greater good? Being none, we stand adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Good.